Alrighty, welcome back to the channel, guys and girls. Let's see what's over here. We got a lot of puzzles. I'm doing thrifting today up here in Scranton. Lots and lots of puzzles. What, what game is this? Stormbreaker. Interesting. Alright, so here's that, uh, I found the flamingo stripe a couple times. Here's like a lavender purple. I've never seen this, but this is also like that Pyrex stuff. It's 25 bucks for the whole stack, which to me is a little pricey, but um, it is sought after. They are absolutely loaded with CDs and DVDs, which most of the time they're not. But these things are full. Holy round. Singstar Country. I mean, if you're like a video game collector, this is like something I've never even seen or heard of. So if you just collect video games, something like this, you're probably not going to play, but you'd probably be the only one who owns this. Tons of Maddens and sports games, sports titles. You got Wii Fit thrown in there. Should be some Guitar Hero. Guitar Hero. There's a Sing. There's a Guitar Hero. Always find one of those. Here we are, second thrift store of the day. Penn State Volleyball. Very, very cool sweatshirt. Like I've always talked about, reverse weave made in USA. This is spot on with what I want, but it's torn down here. That's a pretty bad tear. Because then you have to stitch the under layer and then overlap the top piece. It's got the look, and it's not that expensive, but I think it's just too gone with that. The weird thing about these reverse weaves, if you guys were curious about them, is they fit long and narrow. So what size is this? It says large. This is borderline medium width, like a medium size. Um, and then its length is probably equivalent to an XL. So it's just all around just a weird situation. It's, it's kind of difficult to kind of gauge what the actual size is. But that is something I would buy if it didn't have to tear, even if it is a specific sport. Now, Penn State has a very good volleyball program, and uh, that would definitely sell, but with its condition like it is, gonna have to pass. What is this contraption? I don't know. That I am unsure about. Here's a vintage Winston Cup Pocono Raceway. For people who watch a lot of my videos or subscribers of the channel, you guys know I sell at the flea market. That flea market's actually in the Poconos. Um, and this is something that is very, very cool. Somebody's just staring at me right now. Somebody just pretend that I'm really just talking to myself and yeah, holding a camera. But yeah. That's very cool. It's only two bucks. This is not on sale. Yellow tags aren't on sale. But I'm down. I'm starting to become a hoarder of like vintage graphic design sweatshirts. This one has 1994. So I'm going to grab that. And this thing is straight fire. Vintage Nike, probably made in USA. It is. This one is on sale. It's a fleece, which I don't like, but I think this would sell. This kind of reminds me of like Tiger Woods era in his prime. Very cool. So I think that will sell. So some good scores already. All right, I think this is what they call a spirit jersey. Is this made by spirit? It's not, it's made by press box, but it's the same style. Uh, there was a time, probably I'd say five years ago, where this stuff was really, really hot, and this would probably sell for $20 to $40 on eBay. But now it's just overproduced, like I said, Spirit Jersey, but this made by Pressbox, so it's been knocked off so much. Um, that is one thing that used to be really, really sought after in, in college. Or the college community. Or Ralph Lauren and Denim, this is pretty nice. Not stained. So this thrift store has treated me very, very well today. Uh, I'm working on an experiment right now with blank t-shirts. And uh, this is my size. It's actually a vintage t-shirt. It's a vintage Hanes one, but it's my size. So I decided to grab it. I'm trying to pick up bright colors. Like I want an orange, I want a red, I want a bright green, maybe a bright blue. 
uh, in t-shirts or sweatshirts. So I know I'm going to find them within the next week or so, so it's not a big, big issue. It's an experiment. Some of you guys might be able to see the experiment through the videos. Some it might just go right over your head, but there will be an experiment going on. I would probably not talk too much about it, but very, very, uh, so this is like a perfect place to pick this kind of stuff up if I find it, but it's hard to find a blank t-shirt. It's pretty difficult to find a blank t-shirt, surprisingly. Hopefully we'll find the rest today. We'll see. I also got a couple other cool things. There's one in here that's like really cool, like a sweatshirt for myself. I found this t-shirt, nice vintage Celtics t-shirt that I think I might keep. I can't remember where this is, a penguin sweatshirt. But where'd that thing go? Maybe it wasn't here. Maybe it was here. I don't remember. And I showed the Pocono one. But it's always nice to pick up stuff for yourself. Found a box of tools, which is weird because I never see a box of tools here. This might be a hatch on the bottom, hatch on the bottom, or a hammer. That's a hammer, and that's a hatchet. But it's four bucks, so that's too much for me. Like I say, I try to grab it for my friend, but I only sell it to him for like two or three bucks. But if that was a dollar, I definitely would have grabbed it. It didn't look like it had a name on it. It's just your typical hatcher from this hardware store. Bunch of masonry tools as well. I found this bowl here. 49 cents, so I'm going to grab it. It's not, I don't think, a Pyrex. It's unmarked on the bottom, which is, if it is a Pyrex, it's an Opel, which are generally worth a little bit more. But it's not the shape of a Pyrex. So I, it doesn't look like it's the shape of a Fire King. I have no idea what it might be. So for 50, 49 cents, I'm going to grab it, and then I'll research it when I get home. Might as well learn a little bit on a trip like today. All right, so here we are, wrap up uh, today's day of picking. Overall, another fun day. I think now I'm going to just start collecting and hoarding vintage 90s sweatshirts that are just like a, just obnoxious designs. I just, something about them. Like, I love this Dale Earnhardt sweatshirt. I've got a couple compliments in person on it. It's just different, you know? And I'm not somebody who just likes a simple design. But kind of going over some of the stuff that, you know, I picked up. Awesome vintage Reebok logo, made in USA ringer t-shirt. Reebok is coming back around. There was a time where Reebok, Adidas, was getting blown out of the water. Champion especially. Champion is extremely hot now. They're getting blown out of the water by Nike. And I think Nike's kind of on the downfall. They, uh, they've made some decisions in uh, media to kind of raise their stock and raise their awareness from a business standpoint. And they realize they're kind of on the downfall. And these other companies are coming back around. These 90s design companies. Reebok was really hot in the 90s. So is Adidas. Uh, they're coming back. And they're trying to do what they can. So something like Reebok. Very, very good seller. This would probably sell better than a Nike t-shirt. Like in very similar design. And maybe sell pretty similar. But uh, overall, this is definitely a great pickup. I think I only paid, I only paid $1.50. Uh, for vintage Reebok t-shirts, very simple. People like it. They can wear it with anything. Whereas opposed to we have something like this, which is just outrageous. Pittsburgh Steelers sweatshirt. Going around the arm, the whole chest, the whole kit and caboodle. Uh, I think this is like an XL, but yeah, it is. They always fit like really weird. I think this sweatshirt's also an XL. So I'm going to keep this. Very, very cool design. Something like this, I usually get about $20 to $25 plus shipping. It's something that, you know, if you want a vintage sweatshirt, you're going to want this. You're not going to want something that just says Steelers across it or just says Pittsburgh. You know, I want something that's a little bit more out of the blue. And lastly, whatever this bowl is, and that's really right in the sunlight. So I'm kind of... The reason why I don't think this is Pyrex is because the handles are just so small. But I don't know. It might be. It just looks different to me for some reason. But like I said, on the bottom, there's no marking but a number. And usually the Pyrex Opels are nothing on the bottom. They have to be nothing on the bottom. And they also have a small number on them. So 
That's what kind of made me think that it might be. I don't know what the Pyrex Opel Cinderella bowls go for. This would be uh, not a 401, but whatever their smallest one is. I don't know what their, their Cinderella bowls go as. But the Opels are very, very sought after. They're hard to find. And the way you can definitely tell the difference between a true Opel and one that's not Opel is if it has marking on the bottom. If it does have marking on the bottom, it says Pyrex or whatever, and it's white, it means that there was a pattern on it and it got washed off. It got washed off in the, you know, the dishwasher or, you know, however else somebody might have mishandled with its washing and cleaning. So they are not your true Opel white collectible bowls. Other than that, very, very fun day. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the treasure hunt with me. It's been a blast. Got some cool things. And I actually picked up a red sweatshirt, which I was looking for in another thrift store. So I got my orange t-shirt, my red sweatshirt. I might end up trying to find like a bright green, but not a lime green sweatshirt as well. We'll see what happens. Hopefully you guys did enjoy it. And until next time, have a great day. Keep living a dream. Peace.